So you feel like you may be training hard, maybe nearly overtraining, but you're not growing. Let's discover why that is. So if you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Tom Sergi. I run the Gorilla Platoon, which is an online physique transformation program where we get results like this. And we're going to be addressing the question from a viewer uh, who asked this question here. Now, by the way, if you have questions in your own personal journey, uh, in terms of getting fucking jacked or shredded or doing a body recomp or anything that we really specialize on the channel here, um, be sure to just drop it either in a comment on a video or I, I've, I normally write like, well, this week I wrote a community post uh, where you can just comment your questions on that because more than likely, if you're facing the issue, I guarantee you plenty of other people are as well. So we can all learn from something here. So his question is as follows. Is there such thing as overtraining as long as there is progression in load? Volume or time and attention... Uh, so yeah, progression across these three metrics. I'm not growing despite five sessions per week, six to nine exercises per session, four sets per exercise, 12 sets per set, 200 grams of protein daily, eight to nine hours sleep, fucking come on team nine hours uh, per night. And I'm wondering if I should up or lower the workout load. Brilliant question. Now, if you read this, this guy seems like he's doing more things right than wrong. He's training five times a week, which is, I would say is a sweet spot for anyone that's been training over five days. He's exercising six to nine session, uh, exercises. Seems perfect. Uh, that's nine is, is manageable. Depends on what they are, but most of the time, if it's like four compound, four isolation, golden. Four sets per exercise, so plenty of volume, high reps, plenty of protein to recover, and plenty of sleep to also recover. So, in theory, this guy should be growing. Now, why do we think he may not be? Well, let's first address the comment of, is there such thing as overtraining as long as there is progression in load, volume, or time and attention? No. It is impossible to... If you are progression, it is impossible for you to be not growing. This is what it would look like when you overtrain. So we've got the line here of homeostasis. This is you... Fucker. This is you at rest. Here. This is you chilling, like us now watching this video. This is this is you. Now, you go into the gym, and what you will do initially is create stimulus against your body. Your body will go into what's known as the alarm phase because it, it's now being alarmed by the external stimulus that you've put on it. Back in old times, that would have been fucking saber-toothed tiger chasing after our ancestors. Then it goes into the resistance phase where it resists the stimulus that it's put on and starts to head back towards the line of homeostasis. Because the body doesn't like to be in the space of alarm. It wants to resist the um, outside problem that it is facing. The body is also very smart. So it will super compensate for whatever stimulus you put on it. Because it doesn't want to feel the same pain again. And if you allow enough time to recover, it will come back to the line of homeostasis. Now what will happen is, if you don't allow enough time for recovery, you will go into the alarm phase. And this can work for a singular set. This can work for a training session. Let's take it in the example of a training session. You've done your session. Your body's resisting. It's heading back towards the line, but you don't give it enough chance to even supercompensate or get back to the line. You go in again, boom, back into the arm phase. Now it's going to go deeper. But then it's going to resist, and it wants to come back, 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 back. But you don't let it, and boom, when it comes back again, it'll go even deeper. And even deeper, before you know it, the line trends down. This is a horrible position to be in because this is work, this is work, this is work. This is the body working, this is the body working, this is the body working, etc. But you're not cashing in any of the gains you're making because you're overtraining, you're doing too much. You're either not recovering enough, sleeping enough, or you're not taking long enough between um, sets themselves to allow yourself to come back to the top. Therefore, rather than moving the line of homeostasis up, the, the line of homeostasis is going to stay where it is and you are just going to feel like absolute garbage. This is what training feels like. This is what overtraining feels like. What we want to do for you is we want to take you from the alarm phase. We want to come up. We want to recover. And then we're going to do the same again. And we're going to come up. Uh, we're going to recover. Uh, we're going to go up. Uh, recover. Recover. Boom, 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 boom. And before you know it, the line of homeostasis has now been shifted up. And this is our ability to just become an athlete and to train properly. So that's what overtraining will look like. You're essentially digging the crater without giving it the chance to fully fill in. You're essentially not sowing back the seeds that you've harvested to see the fruits come out of that labor. You're just reharvesting without letting them like fully finish. So in his question, is there such thing as overtraining as long as uh, progression and load volume 
is so if you're progressing in either your load, your volume, and your time and attention, then you're not overtraining because ultimately, for progression to happen, you need to be able to recover, and therefore you can't be overtraining. Now that's in response to the top part of the question. Let's understand why he may not be progressing despite all the work he's putting in. So what I want you to pay attention to is the fact that he's, he is doing four sets per exercise and 12 reps per set. Now this doesn't seem, this seems like you know a good amount of volume and stimulus you should be able to grow from this. But let me draw you another analogy. If the bar for him to grow muscle is up here, I'm gonna draw this twice. Okay, we've got him down here, and we've got another version of him down here. Now what he's doing, he's training hard, right? He's not fucking about. That's a lot of volume, that's a lot of stimulus. But what he's doing, he's actually training in this box here, where this is what's needed to grow new, fresh tissue. He's training hard. Let's say yeah, all of this is like junk, absolute junk, and, and, and it's not going to do anything. It's like warm-up sets. It's like the first five reps of a 12-rep of a set. But what he's doing, he's training a lot in this space here, which will burn energy, it will burn glycogen, it will take effort, you will sweat, you will feel like you've worked out, you will get out of breath. But what you've not done is you've not put enough stimulus for the body to need to progress and breach the gap through this new level. You've done a lot. You've done four sets of 12 reps. That's fucking no joke. That's a lot of volume, right? It's a lot of effort. It's a lot of intensity, but it's it's not enough to breach through the gap here. So what do we want to do? How do we want to get around this? Well, we want to train in a way which is concentrated and direct that's going to breach through the gap. What would that look and feel like? Instead of doing four sets of 12 reps, I would opt for this guy, and it depends on whether it is a, let's say for, for argument's sake, it is a compound exercise. Let's not think about isolation and arms. It's a compound exercise, and then the question you have to ask yourself is, is it freestanding, dumbbell or barbell, or is it a machine version? Now, let's say, for example, it is a dumbbell exercise. I would drop his sets literally in half to two sets. Set one, he would do a heavy as fuck set of six to ten reps, where his goal would be to lift something he has never lifted before in his fucking life. He is going to war, to fucking war with that set in order to breach through the gap. This is, he normally does on flat dumbbell chest press, he normally does, uh, let's say, 80 pounds. Oh no, let's, let's say he does 70 pounds and he can get like 12, 12, 9, 8. That's what he normally gets. Now, cool, there's a great amount of volume. Brilliant. And he's doing 70 pounds. I tell him to do one top set of 6 to 10 and he can lift more load. He can, because if he can do 12, I mean, realistically, with, with, with it being a fresh first set, 70, I reckon he tries 80 pounds. And let's say he gets eight reps for the first time round. Now, he's, oh, the overall volume is lower. 100% the overall volume is lower. I fully appreciate that. And in a weird way, if you only ever looked at total volume, my method will kind of look counterintuitive. But what he will do here is because he's lifting 80 pounds, that's something he's never lifted before from a overall stimulus load in hand uh, perspective from an intensity perspective now in both um, sets the effort the effort he does is going to be fucking top draw of course it is whether he's doing 12 on this or 8 on this the effort will be there but the difference between effort and intensity is effort is what you do and what you can control intensity is the physical load itself number on disc so what we're going to do here is concentrate his effort into a higher amount of intensity to breach the gap and then we're going to do one more back off set where we're going to go from 12 to 15. And this is going to match the fatigue that he's accumulated across the first set. Volume will be lower, 100%. However, the overall stimulus will be greater. He will lift something he's never lifted before, which means he's going to get a result he's never achieved before by breaching through the gap. Now, the only other counteract to this is if it's a machine, you can do a secondary back offset. The reason being, you're not wasting energy or effort on stabilizing the dumbbell or the barbell, you are just pressing. Obviously, you're driving the bicep towards the pec in this analogy to train the pecs, but the machine is already set in a way that when you press against it, it will move in the only way it was set. So you don't need to worry about stabilizing. So that is how I would approach this. I would bring down, especially on his compound exercise, 
two or maybe three sets and I'd be aiming for a top set and a back off set and you're going to drop the load from 20% in between the two sets and that is what I would do. Aiming to get really, really strong rather than just thinking of, because if you're doing four sets of 12 reps, honestly, that's like, you can't be lifting that much load unless you're a big boy, like, and even then it's still relative. So like four sets of 12 reps and I'd love to see the tempo on them. Obviously you, you want to go come down three, two, one, pause, and then boom, back up instead of just down, up, down, up. Um, and that's how you're going to breach through this gap. I would say try it if it's, uh, I, I can't see how you wouldn't progress from this, especially if this is what you've already been doing. I actually think you'll quite enjoy it as well, because if I tell you you've only got two sets on the exercise, you normally do four, and you normally do 12 reps, you're not going to be fucking missing. You're going to be putting everything into that set. You're going to be going to war. You're going to be thinking, if I don't get this next rep up, then my fucking teeth are going to fall out. And you'll work like that, and you will make sure you get it out. So that is how I would um, respond to this question. Um, if you find the same issue then hopefully you can relate to the answer and hopefully you find the methodology useful if you do brilliant subscribe um and if you want to work with me cool uh, you can book a call and we'll take it from there see you tomorrow